the future. Assuming you're watching the old tutorial series and then randomly clicked on this one. <laughs> it's 2024, that tutorial series I made back in 2020 during COVID, but I decided that I wanted to go back into a couple of these old tutorials and redo the ones I did not like. So if you've seen the old Aoni tutorial, then um, this is the remake, the refresh, and you're going to see that it can be done a lot more simpler. So let's hop into it. So I have my several rooms. Here's the main one. We got an upstairs one. Then each of these three rooms, we now have apple, bacon, and chews. Apple, bacon, chews. That's, that's, that's gross. <laughs> <laughs> but the purpose of the weird naming schematics and how plain and fun, I mean, how fun each of these rooms are is to help divide and give you the idea that they're all different. Anyway, we have our killer who's, uh, who's a little bit more friendlier than the ones of the past because when he captures you, he just goes, ha, huh, got you. And then he does a winky face. And of course, he does run on that Pathfinder script, which by the way, this Pathfinder script has a limit. If your math is too big, then the Pathfinder and its algorithm will break down, so it will not work. What is the limit to that? I don't actually know, but hey, as you continue to make your game and investigate, then you should be able to find out that way. Anyway, let's first by having this guy on a switch to assume that he starts chasing once it happens. So now we'll just call this the Aoni switch, because let's be real, that's exactly what this tutorial is about. And once that switch goes on, then he starts his chase. So imagining the first thing that we do is as the player, we will probably run off over here and end up upstairs. So we're going to have to spawn the killer. And of course, we're going to need the killer himself. So I'm just going to take control copy and control paste them in this room. And then here we will have our spawner. Oh yeah, <laughs> our killer, his name is Brad. No offense, Brad's out there, but he's Brad the killer. So anyway, as the spawner, we will also want this to run on a switch, and it can also be called Aoni that turns it on. And we're going to change this to an auto run. So the first thing we're going to do is need to get the player's X and Y position so that we can spawn the killer wherever the player came from. So we're just going to go to control variable. And we're going to create two new ones. I'll call this Brad X and then Brad Y. X will, of course, be player X. And then we can control copy, paste, hit space to edit. And then make sure that we do switch it over to the Y. And inside game data, we do this, bring it down to the Y. And I am using my mouse scrolls to get to them easier. But of course, you could just click to drop downs. All right, so now we got our X and our Y. Oh, and actually, now that I think about it, this should be on parallel process. Because if it's auto run, then the player won't be able to move. And when the killer gets spawned, he'll be spawned right on top of the player. But of course, we want to give the player some time to move a bit before the killer comes out, right? So during the very, very first frame of this map, when the player is on this map, we have acquired the X and Y coordinates of the player. Now we're going to give the player some leeway. So let's just give it one second for the player to move out of his spot. And then we just teleport our killer, aka Brad, right on over to those X and Y coordinates that we assigned earlier. And as for direction, we can honestly just leave it as retained because it does not really matter. Apply, and then the last thing that we want to do is erase event. And the reason why we want to erase event is because if we were to use conditions to change the page, then guess what? We will never be able to go back to this page unless we turn off the conditions here. But we don't want to do that. We want to make sure that this will always happen as long as the condition is on whenever the player enters this map. 
erase event just erases it while the player is still on the map, but the moment that the player leaves the map and comes back, so will this event. Alright, so we can go ahead and test that out, but before we do, we of course have to turn on the AO only switch. So I'm just gonna put out good old Todd. There he is, Todd the tester. And he will go ahead and turn on that switch. Alright, let's go Todd! Yeah! Oh, 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 awkward, awkward. I, I just realized that he's awkward. <laughs> Some parallel where it should be on event touched. Alright, here he comes. Oh my god. And he moves so slow because, of course, he's on frequency. We gotta put it on to the max. And we'll also do it to Brad upstairs. To the max. Event touch. Don't forget this. <laughs> totally did not mess up earlier and had to cut that out. <clears throat> Anyways, here he comes. And boom, he teleports. Now you probably noticed that he was kind of just awkwardly up there. And yeah, that was indeed very awkward. I'm going to just let him catch me and wink at me because he feels better when that happens. But anyway, so we're going to go back to our spawner. And at the very tippity top, we're just going to do set movement route. Take bread, make them transparent. And we're just going to control copy, control paste. And we're just going to turn off transparency. And that should do the trick. And, haha! Ha. Ah, there he is! Oh my god, he's chasing right after me. This is so scary. Oh my god. Now, you probably noticed that little flicker that happened for a fraction of the frame before he started chasing me. And if you want to prevent that, then all you gotta do is back inside the spawner event, find before transparency turns off, edit it just above it, and have it turn towards the player. Ta-da! No awkward flicker. He <laughs> got you. Wink. Imagine getting grabbed between the arms and then the dude just starts winking at you. Ugh. Scary. To further test this, let's now control copy Brad and paste Brad in apple, bacon, and choose. And then we're just gonna also grab the event spawner and paste it in each of these. Now there is one more thing we gotta check, and just that's just to make sure that Brad is here. And we also have to adjust it for these. Now there is a unique way to get around that, where instead of having to reassign this, you just kind of make sure that Brad remains as the same ID. So in here, Brad is ID 2, but originally, Brad was ID 5. That kind of doesn't really work out too well here, just because there's less events here than it is in the upstairs hallway. But what we can do is go in here, adjust this to event ID 2, and yeah, it will make no sense at the moment, but you're going to see how it turns around completely. Now we go to event 2, which is this door, copy, paste it, Delete event door 2, find Brad, control copy, paste them, and look, there's a new Brad. And we can go back to the original 5, delete, move Brad over, and then as for this door, we can move it back over. So, I'm pretty sure you were able to capture that, but when you delete an event, it will paste it to fill in any of those holes before creating a new event. So now if we open up the spawner, you'll actually see that he's back. And now we can copy, go back into Apple, delete Apple's spawner, and then paste the spawner. And it's all Brad again. Now we go into Bacon. So previously it was Event 5, but deleting it, Brad is back. Because that's Event ID 2. And then same with Choose. All 5s. Delete, and Brad's back, because he is event ID 2. 
Okay, and control save, control R, and test, 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 test. Oh my god, he's after me. Oh, I better go into Apple. I'm sure I can escape him this way. Oh, dang it, he, he, he's still chasing me. God, why is he so persistent? He just wants to say, ha, huh, got you, and then wink. Such a creep. Leave me alone. Ah, oh, no, he's chasing me again. It's forever. It's endless. How do I make him stop? He will not stop. He just chases for all eternity. What is my life? Ah! <laughs> and notice how he actually does spawn from wherever you exit. So it's a lot faster and a lot easier. Now, assuming you want to return back to the original map where Brad first spawned, you of course do want to have your spawner again, except you're going to have to make a few slight changes. And that slight change is that you do need a second switch. And that second switch could just be, you know, only, I'll just put two for lack of an idea. But basically all that does is that wherever you have your map that the player will run out of or into, just make sure you turn on that switch so that this will actually, the spawner will turn on the next time that the player is on this map. So right now, turning on the cutscene, there he is chasing, I leave this map, oh god he's gonna get me. <laughs> Alright, so, turn on the cutscene, leave this map, actually move away for some bit, run up here, juke back down, he's gonna come out of there, and now back into the original map, and there he is, ha ha, ha ha, ha 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 ha. Alright you guys, and there you have it, there is AO only done much much more simpler. Now, there is a way where we can improve this, where instead of making sure that Brad is event 2 every single time, we can actually open up the spawner on each map and control it by a certain variable and say Brad's ID. And we can tell it which one is actually Brad's ID. And then the spawner will work based on that. But that does get a little bit, um, a little bit tricky because we would have to use script calls. So if you are interested in that, then do check out the next video. Script calls are something that you should really get into as a developer. And I know it can be a little bit intimidating because you're typing it all yourself. But there's this very, very fabulous spreadsheet for script calls and it actually makes your life a lot easier because they tell you what to type to give you some examples and they give you like an explanation of each of them. And then after that one, I will be recreating this old hide mechanic, which doesn't really change too much, but there's some neat things that we can do that's perhaps a little bit simpler. If you want to check out some of my other tutorials, then check out my website down in the descriptions or check out some of the games I made. All right, till the next one. Ladder. <laughs>